This is the Ascar FRA 300 quintuplet apochromatic refractor telescope. What that means is that it has three elements at the front, just like a regular triplet apo, and it has two other elements at the back which serve to flatten the field, usually like a field flattener does in a regular triplet refractor, uh, except in this case those elements are built in, so you don't need to uh, use an external field flattener. This is what's known as a Petz valve design and because of that design you don't have to worry about back focus or back spacing which you normally have to get accurate on most other refractors. Now I've been looking for the perfect travel refractor for many years now and I recently purchased this. Um, after trying out the William Optics GT71, I decided I didn't want to deal with backspacing anymore uh, and I can quickly change cameras if I don't have to worry about backspacing and try out various cameras. I had primarily purchased this to use with my Canon 6D full frame DSLR, so I needed a telescope that could correct to the very edges of a full frame sensor, and this scope advertised a 44 millimeter imaging circle, as well as very good illumination correction at the edge of a full frame sensor. This telescope uh, advertised a two micron spot size at the center of the frame, so the stars are expected to be pretty sharp, at least in theory and also overall I just I like the design of the scope it uh, comes with a very nice carry handle here also this handle can be used for attaching a guide scope so if you're doing astrophotography you can put a guide scope right up here and that results in a nice rigid setup with no flexure it also has a uh, shoe on the side over here for an additional finder scope or a red dot finder if you need. It has a very nice sliding dew shield and that stays in place very well. You can lock it in place uh, as well. And this has a focal length of 300 millimeters and a focal ratio of f5. So it is fairly fast for, an, for a well corrected imaging refractor. Also, it comes with a 2.5 inch uh, rack and pinion focuser. And uh, it also has a dual speed focuser. So this is a 10 to one reduction. I find that to be extremely smooth and very, very well made, very responsive. And this is the locking screw at the bottom. Now the scope is built like a tank. So the total weight is 3.139 kilograms or about 6.9 pounds, which is light enough to use on my SkyGuider Pro uh, Star Tracker. It seems to check all of the boxes for me, but let's see how it performs in practice. I'm going to do a couple of uh, tests out in the field, do some actual star testing, check for chromatic aberration on the moon, and then I will stack an actual image in PixInsight and show you what the final results look like. I put the scope on an Iopteron SEM70 mount, which was a bit overkill with its 70 pound capacity, but it provided a stable base for testing. My first target was the moon. This is the first image. You can see the earth lit portion of the moon. This is known as earth shine. Now the reason I overexposed the bright part of the moon is so that I can check for chromatic aberration. And as you can see, there is absolutely no hint of any chromatic aberration. Uh, this, the image is, is perfectly clean. And of course that's to be expected as this is a pretty high quality triplet apochromatic refractor with two extra elements, which makes it a quintuplet. And here is a brighter image of the moon. As you can see again, no hint of chromatic aberration. And this one is a little bit less overexposed, but again, beautiful image with no sign of chromatic aberration. Now let's take a look at some dark sky images. I will switch over to Messier 45. So let's uh, drag and drop one frame into PixInsight and uh, take a look at the frame. So we will maximize that. Auto stretch the frame. And as you can see, zoomed into 
the stars look absolutely excellent in the center uh, very very sharp very very tiny and of course this is a completely unprocessed image so no uh, sharpening or deconvolution has been done to it as you can see in the corners the stars also look very very good in every corner now let's use some of the tools built into PixInsight to analyze this image we will use aberration inspector and I will make this full size there we go so in the center stars are absolutely perfect top right corner perfect bottom right corner perfect bottom left corner perfect and top left corner yeah just about perfect I can't see any issue there so the stars are very very sharp this might be the best performance I've ever seen visually in any of the refractors I've ever used for imaging at full frame sizes normally you need to pay a lot more money to get performance like this now I'm going to take a black and white luminance of this frame and then we can analyze it using uh, this tool over here full width half maximum eccentricity now that'll give us a more qualitative measurement instead of just my visual inspection and thoughts so um, right over here full width half maximum uh, 1.756 pixels uh, eccentricity is 0.1211 that's pretty good let's take a look at the actual graph and that'll give us a better idea we'll dismiss that so as you can see the full width half maximum graph on the left uh, very very good 1.72 in the center and the corners at worst is 1.82 so they are pretty similar uh, in terms of the size of the stars between the center and the corners and then for eccentricity um, as you can see at the center is 0 0.44 which is just about perfect and the edges are 0.52 on all of the corners now this will likely change slightly uh, depending on how good your focus is because uh, it performs best when it's perfectly at focus but I mean this is a, these are excellent results below 0.7 is not an issue at all so uh, and the results are fairly symmetrical uh, all four corners are very very similar so I'm very happy to see that now let's see what the results look like once they have been processed let's uh, zoom in yep looks excellent uh, now what I'm gonna do is go to script image analysis aberration inspector type in a slightly larger size so this fills my screen there we go now you can see the stars at full size at the very edge of a full frame sensor and uh, but yeah I'm still extremely happy with that I could not have asked for a better scope optically this is excellent performance for full frame so I hope you found that helpful and if you want to buy one of these refractors consider using the link in the description below that'll help out this channel at absolutely no cost to you. Again thanks for watching and clear skies.